in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said that when a man ways please you, you make even his enemy be at peace with him. We thank you, Father, for we know there have been some times even when enemies have rose up against him. But you, Father God, stood on his behalf. Thank you, Lord, that he have a determination to run and see what the end is going to be. Thank you for the commitment. Thank you for the love that he have for your people. Now, Lord, continually build them up on every side. Continue to build a church and make it what you would have it to be. Allow those, Father God, that he has shepherded to commit themselves unto the work of the ministry that nothing will hinder that which you are trying to accomplish through them. Now, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that they continue to build the house on the rock. Lord, we know Jesus is the rock and we thank you this day that he said, on this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, Lord, we stand here in our we stand here, Father God, with love. We stand here with confidence. We stand here knowing, Father God, that when we call on your name, ask you according to your word that you would do whatever we ask, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we come here to glorify you and magnify you. Remember the man of God that can preach your unadulterated word. Lord, stand with him. Give him power to preach, power to teach, power to reach today. In the name of Jesus. Use him to your glory, Father. Use him until you're satisfied. Lord, we need a word from you right now in the name of Jesus. There is a word we know from you. And we know, Father God, you won't leave yourself without a witness. So we thank you for this day. We magnify you and glorify you. We love you and we adore you, Father. We thank you for the privilege and opportunity just to worship one more time. Lord, we thank you for the door being opened. We thank you, Lord, for drawing those that in darkness into the marvelous light. We ask that you continue, Father God, to do your will in each and every one of us. In the precious and powerful name of Jesus, when it's all over and said and done, draw us a little closer to thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Man, please don't sit down. Please don't sit down. Can, can, can you give the man of God just a couple of more minutes? You got an eternity to rest. Amen. But I want everyone to acknowledge the fact that my friend, yes, my friend, he was my friend before he was anything else to me. Amen. My friend is coming from greater Mount Carmel. Amen. He's coming from Greater Mount Karma, the Church of Restoration. It, he didn't come for the church that just gonna leave just where you came. Amen. I'm not gonna sit up here and preach before we get here. We all know him, and we should all love him, amen. Bishop George N. Sanders III, amen. Oh, praise God. Y'all go ahead, be seated. Go ahead, be seated, be seated, be seated, be seated, be seated. I just want to say, it's good to be home. Y'all ain't hear me. I said it's good to be home. Heart of faith is where I came up. Let me tell you, it's nothing like being at home. Because you can be yourself at home. Amen. I, 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 I bumped into my, 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 my sister. You know, that's my sister in ministry, Sister Ramsey. Y'all call her Sister Ramsey. I call her Dee Dee. I said, I need your help, woman of God. She said, don't be calling me no woman of God. You know who I am. I said, you know what? I sure do, sister. I don't even know why I'm acting like that. I'm at home. Let me go ahead and smile a little bit and laugh and get loose. I heard everybody say some good things about Bishop, but y'all forgot he my pastor too. Amen. And I thank God for what you have imputed into me because 
I could not be the man of God that I am today, not that I'm that great a man of God, but I couldn't be doing what I'm doing now had it not been for the fatherhood of ministry that you bestowed upon me. And I thank you and I thank beautiful First Lady Baines, because, amen. When I, look, when I went looking for my wife, I thought a lot about you. And I said, you know what? I, I, I need a good woman like First Lady. And guess what? It's contagious because all the men in my church, they followed suit too. Well, let me get a woman like Bishop got. So, so, so I want to thank you because, you know, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And you want to make sure the person that you follow and won't put you in a ditch. I thank God for the man of God and the anointing that's on his life. Now, I'm not going to be before you long. I kind of got a little tired at church today, but I brought some friends along with me. Amen. Everybody that came along with me from the ride, y'all stand up real quick. Show Bishop some love, y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank y'all for coming along. I love y'all. I praise God for you. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to turn it over into the hands of our music department. Can, can we bless the Lord just a little bit before I preach? Can we take it a little bit higher to the next level? Oh, praise God. Come on, y'all. Let's do it. Y'all come on up. Hallelujah. Amen. Clap 
your hands. Everybody, clap your hands. Everybody, clap your hands. Everybody, clap your hands. This is the way. Clap your hands. 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 Do I have anybody out there on this evening? That you know you got a blessing with your name on it. Do I have a witness on this evening? You got a tailor-made blessing with your name on it. We just come to encourage you. Listen. Makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to see you through. Hold your head up, put a smile on your face. This is another test, it won't last always. So get it ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. Get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. Been hurting deep down inside. Let me encourage you, it's gonna be alright. Right. Test and trials come to make you strong. Keep on believing, you keep holding on. So get ready, get ready for your blessing.
must come and encourage you on this evening that no matter what you are free indeed hold the sign said free is free indeed yeah we just want to come and celebrate Bishop and First Lady Bain Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah! Hallelujah! 
That's it. Send in the praise. That's all right. Go ahead and praise him. The Bible says that when they got ready for war, that the prophet said, send Judah first. Judah were the praisers. Judah were the worshipers. Whenever you go into war, you don't go into war with your fist balled, but you go into war with your hands lifted high, with a praise in your heart, and a shout in your mouth. And I need somebody to shout, Hallelujah! That's it, that's it, that's it. Send the praise in the house. It's already right. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to make this quick work. Oh, God. Somebody just give God praise real quick for 18 years. Give him praise. Bishop, I remember that when they was wondering about the ministry of Peter, Paul, and Barnabas, and the Sadducees and the Pharisees got together and said, we're going to have to do something about this ministry because these men are turning the world upside down. And there was a wise Pharisee in the Sanhedrin council by the name of Gamaliel as a matter of fact, this was the Pharisee of whom Paul said at his feet. And Gamaliel said, men, let me tell you something. If this is just a fad, it's going to die over overnight. But if this thing is real, then you got a problem on your hands. I don't know about you, Bishop, but you're not a fad. You're not a one-hit wonder. You're not something that just went bump in the night. But God has stamped his seal of approval on this ministry. And from the day you started it, you started it with a spirit of hope. On one side you had God, and on the other side you had mummers and complainers and scoffers that said that it wasn't going to work. But you put your trust in God. And you even named the church after the conviction that you felt. That they purified their hearts and minds by faith. And 18 years later, here we are today looking at the fruits of what God put in your spirit. And I can't get nobody to shout up in here. Oh, you better go ahead and give a... See, Bishop, I'm praising... Because my goal is that I want to make 18 years. But God said that when you celebrate with one person, it uh, won't be too long for you celebrating yourself. Uh, so if I was you today, I would put away the haterade uh, and I would put some celebration in my spirit uh, and thank God for 18 years. Oh, glory to God. Sad years, crying years. People turned their back on you. People laughed at you. Folks pulled out. 
thought they were going to hurt you. But through it all, I thank God that you didn't look at the resource, but you kept your eyes on the source who was God. And you can give God a praise because if he took you through 18, he'll take you through 18 more. Hallelujah. You that have your Bibles, we want to go to the New Testament and we want to look at Paul's letter to the Philippian church. Amen. Bless all of you that are here. Heart of faith, I love you. Greater Mount Carmel, I love you. Living Word Resurrection Bible Church, we love you, Bishop James. Amen. G. Todd, Pastor Fisher, Melvin and Valerie Fisher, we love you. Thank God for you. And every other ministry, amen. First Lady James, and to everyone that is represented here. I can't call you by name when I come. I love it when I come to Heart of Faith because all I got to say is all my brothers and sisters in the ministry. Amen. Because I am your brother. Amen. Not even the elder. I'm one of the least of the brothers. Amen. But I'm happy to be one of the brothers. Amen. I can say I miss fruit, hallelujah, amen, and I'm not ashamed to say that, I say that with pride, amen, that he's my father in the ministry, amen, hallelujah, glory to God, I don't like calling uh, First Lady Bain's mother because, amen, and I can't call nobody mother that look like they can be my sister, amen, hallelujah, oh yeah, and, and I thank God, hallelujah, for my beautiful wife that's full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. First Lady Sanders, thank you for putting up with me. Amen. To all of my deacons, I see you, them daddy, Deacon King, I thank God for you. I thank God for all the beautiful people that came along from Greater Mount Carmel. Amen. Hallelujah. We, amen. I'm sure they were tired. I tied them to death, but they still came. So I thank each and every one of you. Amen. Hallelujah. I wanted to give you time to get to the book of Philippians. They told me that, amen, that our theme was leadership worth following and honoring your pastor with overwhelming love. I prayed about it and I found a scripture in the Bible that covered both. I said, Lord, how do I talk about leadership we're following? I know that he gave us Jeremiah 3.15. I give you pastors according to my own heart that will teach you with knowledge and understanding. And it's so many things. Preach the word in season. You know, we got so many pastoral messages. And, you know, how to, and, and I also wanted to talk about how to honor the pastor with overwhelming love. And before I knew it, I was in the book of Philippians and I came across this. Now, I don't want to be too wordy. I'm really, when I read it, that's going to be half the sermon right there. Because once you hear it, I think you're going to get the message. Amen? Amen. We're talking about leadership worth following and honoring the pastor with overwhelming love. Amen. I get scared when I get up here and I talk about honoring the past. Amen. It can get kind of cold sometimes, but I, I, I know that my help is here because my help came with me. Amen. And the help should have came with you. Amen. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. He should have came with you through the door. But just in case you didn't bring the Holy Ghost, we got a whole bunch of it in the house right now. And you can take as much of it as you want. Uh, I'm going to start at the first verse, and y'all just bear with me, but I'm praying that you read along. It reads as follows. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, this Paul talking, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eodius, and I beseech Sinte that they may be of the same mind in the Lord. Some of y'all are going to catch that later. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, 
help those women which labor with me in the gospel with Clement also and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice let your let your moderation be known unto all men the Lord is at hand be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are, are a good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise think on these things those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me, somebody going to catch that, have flourished again wherein ye were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Notwithstanding ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now you Philippians know also that at the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving but you only for even in Thessalonica you sent once and again unto my necessity not everybody say not not because I desire a gift but I desire fruit that may abound to your account but I have all and abound I am full having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you an odor of a sweet smell a sacrifice acceptable well pleasing to God but my God everybody say my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, and real read the 20th verse, now unto God our Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. Before you take your seat, I know that we said what the theme was, but I just want to use this as a subtopic. There is a blessing in your man of God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. I, uh, amen. Hallelujah. I just, I'm, I'm going to be very brief, but I'm definitely going to communicate this word to you. Um, I love Paul because Paul, even as an apostle, I love the fact that he was very, very, very meticulous in his explanation to the churches. And when he comes into the book of Philippians, he comes into the book of Philippians with an exhortation to rejoice. Understand that I took this escort of scripture because it, to me, it speaks to the church today. When he starts off his letter, he says that I want you odious and sink day did y'all see that, that they be of the same mind in the Lord? When the apostle was writing, he knew at that time that there was some mess in the church. Folks wasn't getting along. People were tripping, gossiping, doing everything. And it's funny that 
even though the pastor is supposed to be the pillar of the church, he's supposed to be the one that's praying and amen, speaking blessings on people, it's easy for the pastor to become the referee. Somebody going to get with this in a second. Amen. We find out that the pastor becomes the peacemaker and the problem solver because even in the church, the devil is attacking. He told them that it's time for us to get on one accord and to be in the same mind. And then he said, not only let's get the mess out of the church, but then he said, let's rally together and help the people in the church that's trying to push the church to the next level. You know, it kind of get tired. I, I, I kind of feel like Sweet Brown on YouTube that there's some things in the church that ain't nobody got time for anymore. You know, we, we, we have to look at the fact, that, and it's hard. I, 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 you know, I'm preaching a pastoral, but I got to tell you on behalf of Bishop Baines that it can get hard sometimes. Hey, amen. I know that I gave you hell when I was your youth pastor. There were things that I could not see and I didn't understand and I wanted answers. But when I got older, I found out that it wasn't my business to understand. My role and responsibility was to follow the man of God. Because my blessing was in the man of God. Understand that when you follow the man that God has set to be your spiritual eyes, that you got to get into the spirit of David when he went to the 23rd chapter and he said y'all the Lord is my shepherd see 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 understand that David said that you know my pastor is the Lord he said he's my shepherd he's the one that make you know I, I and, but, but before I get there David said something he said because the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want some of us that's catching a little bit too much oh can I say that in church some of us that's catching a little bit too much of hell we might want to check ourselves and see if we following the man of God the way that we say that we're following him sometimes our blessings get caught up when we become rebellious and we don't follow good leadership and I'm and I'm scared of rebellious people because I remember Samuel telling the people that that uh, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and God know that I'm not Harry Potter and I'm not trying to put on a cape and a hat I want to be right I don't I don't want a black robe I want a white robe I need a halo amen that little magic stick not gonna get me into heaven but it says that there's a crown that's laid up for me and that's the prize that I'm seeking after. I'm not trying to get no obstacles. I'm not trying to get no intrusions. I don't want nothing, no diversions, any of that to stand in my way. Amen. From following the man of God and getting my blessing. He told them, he, he, he told them like this. I hope y'all don't mind me taking my time. But he told them to rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice Let, and, and it's something that I learned in my church and I know my church get tired of me saying it but every chance I get I tell them to praise the Lord why am I telling them to praise the Lord because when your hands are lifted high it's hard to do a lot of this oh it's hard it's hard to do that when you're Oh yeah, when, when, when my, when, amen, amen, and, and, and it's all in how you do it, whether you lift your hands and bow your heads, or whether you lift your hands or look up to heaven, let me tell you something, when you praising God and looking up to heaven, it's hard to look around and see the tight skirts in the room, men, holla, you know you ought to praise the Lord too, some of us can, amen, not, Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, hey, there's a song that they sang in the old church that say, when you see me coming, I got Jesus on my mind. And, 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 and some of us, I don't know what we got in our mind. Amen. When you walking up, hey, I get scared sometimes when folks walking up to me. They walking up on me like I'm fixing to get a choke slam or a sl I'm like, oh, oh, my God. He told the people to rejoice. 
because when you put your mind and your heart on Jesus it puts you in a spirit that the circumstances that you're facing are not as bad as they seem because to rejoice gives a reinforcement to the spirit to let you know that it's not going to be trouble always it may look bad right now it may seem like you're not going to make it out but if you can ursha up a praise in the midst of your situation it reinforces and reassures you that God is going to bring you out is it anybody in the house that's ready to come out right right about I, I don't know about you but I got some things that I got to come out of. So I got to do what the apostles say. I've got to rejoice. And even when I don't want to rejoice, I'm going to rejoice again. And if I get through praising and I still feel bad, I'm going to go back and give them a little bit more praise. Oh, my God. Father, let me get through it. And look what he says. I, I, I'm, I'm just going to take my time. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let the Holy Ghost rule this. I love what Paul said. He's admonishing the people. Telling them that if you just follow the recipe that I've given you, you're going to have success in whatever you do. And I love when he gets to the scripture where he says, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are of a good report whatsoever things of virtue he said think somebody say think. think think on these things the things that you've seen and heard in me do and the peace of God shall be with you now I want to put a pen right there because then at that very moment the apostle the pastor if you don't mind me saying that he put his own life as the standard I believe we said that it was leadership worth following now the problem with the church today is that we got a lot of leaders that are not worth following you know, I'm, 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 I'm just real about it. I, I, I tell great amount Carmel all the time. When you see me caught up in something, let me know. Because I want you to have integrity in leadership. They'll tell you right now, I said, if it's any women in here that I called you after hours, raise your hand. If it's any of you that I offered to take you to the Waffle House or to Chili's or the Papa's, raise your hand. Amen. If it's anybody that I said inappropriate to you, raise your hand because, see, sometimes you got to keep it real. And leaders today have a problem with keeping it real. And the reason why so many people are going to hell, the reason why so many people have evacuated the church and are doing what's right in their own eyes is because there is an absence of leadership in the church. The Bible tells us that woe to that shepherd that scattereth the flock. Woe to that shepherd that spend more time fleecing the sheep than leading the sheep beside the still water. And see, if we want to see revival take place in the church, then leadership is going to have to come back up to the standard to which God called us to. Y'all don't have to say nothing about it. I'm going to praise God all by myself on that one. I'm talking to all my preachers and all my deacons and all my leaders right now. If you're not going to live right for the Lord, then you can forget about going to the next level. Don't ask the Lord to fill you with the spirit. Don't ask the Lord to give you none of his gifts because you're not fit for the plow. Ooh, look, it's getting quiet in here right now. But you need to know, I tell them at my own church, I don't want everybody laying hands on me because some folks' hands is nasty. I don't want no nasty hands laying on me. See, y'all mad at me. I ain't gonna go nowhere. Amen. I, 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 I know I, I, I lost a lot of people when I said it, but I meant what I said. 
You can't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you can't pray for me with Jack Daniels on your breath. We need deliverance in the church. Hallelujah. Y'all know we need deliverance in the church. You can't come pray for me smelling like club divas. No, 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 no. You go back and get that thing right. I don't care if you do 50 flips in the church. Make sure that on that 49th flip, you ask the Lord for some repentance. Oh, I'm still talking about leadership word following. I'll be done in a second. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We're we, 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 we going to get through this. It, 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 it hurts me when correction comes in the church because nobody likes correction. Everybody wants to get to heaven in seven minutes or it's free. Amen. But, but it comes a time that leadership has got to be accountable for the work that we do. Because the Bible says that judgment is going to begin at the house of God. And if it begin at the house of God, what's going to be the end for the rest of the world? Understand that judgment is taking place right now. And one thing that I don't want to do is I don't want to be like Judas. I don't want to lose my bishopric. When God come back for me, I don't want to come back trying to make no excuses. God, I would have, should have, could have because God is the one that got eyes to and fro going over the earth, in the earth, and out of the earth, seeing all the affairs of men. Oh, somebody going to get with me on today. Uh, we, a, 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 amen. And, and, and what I love is that God is looking for men and women that are ready to receive the call, that are ready to take the challenge and to say, for God, I'm going to live and God, I'm going to die. Amen. I like what Sister Tiffany said too. But what people don't understand that's coming into ministry is that it's not all about the design of suits and the snakeskin shoes. We've dress like this because if we come up in the church looking like your friend on the corner, you're not going to believe a word we say. If I come up in here now with my FUBU shirt on and my jeans sagging down where you can see my fruit of the looms and my tennis shoes sticking out high and white, you're going to say that Negro can't tell me nothing. We come in the church dressed like this because we want you to know that we got some good sense. We come in the church dressed like this because we want you to have a good example of what you should look like. Everybody is not going to come in the church dressed right, but at least by the time they leave, they'll have a good example of what they should look like. Oh, y'all making it hard in here. <laughs> but I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm still talking about leadership we're following. I remember in the book of Isaiah, y'all, that the prophet said that in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. And above it stood the seraphims. Ooh, the burning ones. <laughs> and they had six wings. With two they covered their feet. And with two they covered their face. And with two they did fly. And they cried one to another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The earth is full of his glory. And Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, I'm sorry, Isaiah said that the post of the doors of the temple shook at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke. And he looked around and he said, whoa, it's me. Here I am calling myself a prophet, but I found out that I got a long way to go because I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the missy. If it was me, I'd say, I, I, I work in a church of ministers and deacons and with, with unclean lips. 
But now my eyes have seen the Lord of hosts. But what I love about God, that even as dirty as you are, even as nasty as you are, even as jacked up and discombobulated as you are, he'll still let the angel take the tongues and take the coal from the altar and brush it across your lips. He'll cleanse every iniquity and he'll purge every sin. And Isaiah, being sanctified, heard the voice of God. And the voice said, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Because everybody can't go. Many are called, but few. Somebody shout, few. Few are chosen. And as, uh, Isaiah said, here am I. Send me. I'm talking about leadership we're following and then I'm reminded of another scripture that says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was with was God and if you go down a few scriptures it says that the word was made flesh and dwelt among men now I'm kind of confused because right after that it says there was a man that was sent from God whose name was John was not that light but he came to be a witness of that light and when I think about leadership worth following I think about my bishop because I heard what Bishop Witherspoon said some people don't know you like we know you we know when you cried we know when you was heartbroken we know when something tickled you silly and tickled you pink but one thing that we can say was that you always were a leader that kept it on the top oh see y'all don't want to get with me right now But I love God that when he sent a man, he's going to send a man that's tailor-made and anointed just for you. I love the fact that when God sends a man, he'll send the man that it seemed like he got the message from heaven himself. When he preach, he'll scare the hell out of you and he'll get ready to put heaven in your heart and in your pocket. I thank God for Bishop John W. Baines and First Lady Baines. When I look at them, I think about the dynamic duo. I think about Aquila and Priscilla. See, sometimes you don't have to be all dap and debonair, but you can take the smartest ones and teach them a thing or two. I seen you take people that had PhDs and taught them the right way to serve and worship God. I'm getting ready to close y'all, but I'm talking about when God sends a man, when God sends a man that'll pray for you in the midnight hour when everybody else done forgot about you. When God sent a man that when you call him and say they fixing to repo my car, he'll come to your house and drop a check in your hand. That's what I'm talking about. When God sends a man, when he sends the preacher by, when it's not no food in your house, the preacher say, I'll buy your groceries. I'll pay your light bill. I'll make sure that the lights don't go off. I'm talking about leadership worth following. I'm not following no hoes. I'm not following no homosexuals. I'm not following no liars. I'm not following no thieves. But I'm following a real... See, I'm not scared. I'm a kid.
keep it real in the house of God we like to follow people because they look good because they smell good because they got a helicopter and a limousine but if I could go to the church and just pull a member out I wonder how many people got to ride in the helicopter how many people got to ride in the limousine but Bishop got a Mercedes and anybody that need a ride can jump on in hallelujah hallelujah I love Jesus and I love when he sends his man the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God but how somebody shout how 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 I need to get faith by hearing but how can they hear without the preacher how can they hear without the man of God but blessed are the feet of he that comes in the gospel of peace somebody ought to shout right there hallelujah glory to God before I take my seat the Bible says that we ought to honor the man of God I'm talking about honoring the man of God with overwhelming love let me tell you something if he was there for you when you were sick and you got a healing in your body you can't put a price on that how you gonna honor the man of God if the man is hungry you better be the first to feed him he better not have to ask you better be the first to make sure his lights are on honor your man of God because he's praying for you honor your man of God because his neck is stretched for you when you in your bed sleep he's pulling down strongholds saying God bless him God keep him don't let him go back to the crack house don't let him lose his mind don't let him go back to the street keep a Lord send your angels send your help Lord the pastor and wife are praying when you sleep when your mouth is on them they're praying for you when you're holding back your money they're giving their all I'm gonna honor the man of God with every dime that's in my pocket because if God bless him it's gonna trickle down on me hallelujah somebody shout somebody give him praise somebody oh my God I feel the anointing I feel the Holy Ghost I feel like praising him is it anybody here that don't mind praising God for 18 years 18 years of struggling 18 years of straining some days you had to preach to the wall but you kept on preaching some days look like your own family was against you but you kept on preaching some days sister Baines seemed like nobody like the first lady but you kept on lifting them hands now look at you now he has done great things the stone that the builders rejected has become the head corner stone it's a marvelous thing marvelous in our eyes I like the way God do it hallelujah somebody praise him keep on going keep on stretching keep on reaching God got your reward I see the building I see phase two and it's coming up quick somebody shout in this place shout hallelujah hallelujah ain't it all right ain't it all right 
feel something uh, stretching out in me. Uh, heart of faith. Uh, look at your man of God. Uh, this is the one uh, that God sent uh, just for you. Uh, you ought to thank God uh, that he gave you bishop. Uh, you ought to praise God uh, that the man and the woman of God uh, are at your disposal. Uh, I thank God uh, for good leadership. Uh, I thank God uh, for true leadership. Uh, I thank God uh, for powerful leadership. Uh, I thank God uh, for anointed leadership. Uh, you ought to praise him uh, when your need is anointed. Uh, He'll pray and the demons will flee. He'll pray and it'll turn from night to day. He'll pray and you'll turn from sad to happy. Somebody ought to shout and say glory, 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 hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. I love a leader. God anointed Moses uh, to bring the children uh, of Israel out of slavery. Uh, he anointed them uh, to come out the wilderness. Uh, he used Joshua. Uh, he used Caleb. Uh, he used the judges. Uh, he used Deborah. Uh, he used Samson. Uh, he used Elijah. Uh, he used Samuel. Uh, he used David. Uh, oh my God. Uh, somebody shout. Uh, I'm talking about leaders. Leadership worth following, not just a preacher, but a warrior, not just a warrior, but a lover, not just a lover, but a fighter. Hallelujah! Glory! Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout up in this house. I'm praising God that we're coming out. We've been through some rough times, but we're coming out. Shake somebody's hand like you're crazy and tell them they're coming out. But before I let it go, I just want to say that you ain't seen nothing yet. There's still many rivers that you got to cross. There's still many hills that you got to climb. It's folks in the community. If y'all don't preach to them, they go into hell. If you don't preach to them, somebody shout, might die. God has called you and put the spirit of the breaker within you to go in the community and to take those that were lost and bring them into the fold. Hallelujah. God's going to do it. Somebody better shout in this place. I'm shouting because there's deliverance. I'm shouting because there's breakthrough. I'm shouting because I'm going to get my blessing. There's an anointing in this house that if you just praise God, you're going to come out of your sickness. You're going to come out of your condition. I need some crazy worshipers. Can somebody pray? Can somebody shout? Can somebody dance? When the praises go up, 